With the high demand for graphics these days, how much does an APU really cost? What's your minimum specification? So how much an APU costs is an interesting question in itself. The current AMD APUs on the market retail, you're going to be paying double suggested retail price to find them if you can find them at all. So today's news is that AMD is kind of officially launching its new Zen 3 APUs for desktop. These are Cezanne based APUs but fully enabled for 65 watt desktop use. So taking cues from the Ryzen 5000 mobile family, we now have 65 watts on a Ryzen 5000G for the desktop for the AM4 platform. One slight catch. You can't buy them. I can't buy them. Nobody can buy them. Well, not directly. These are going to be sold as OEM only parts to begin with. That means that system integrators like Dell, like HP, we've already seen a couple of HP systems with these already being listed in places like Spain and Germany, uh, like Lenovo. These big box, big pre-built OEM partners will be able to buy the chips from AMD and then be able to build a system around them and sell them on to you. Now, AMD has done this in the past. Um, we've seen Threadripper Pro go OEM only. We've seen Ryzen 4000 APUs, Ryzen 4000G go uh, OEM only. The difference here is that right out the gate, AMD is saying that there will be a full retail launch later in the year. Now with Ryzen 4000G APUs, the ones based on Zen 2, we'd never really got an indication that they would ever come to retail. Threadripper Pro, eventually we learned, is coming to retail and that has now entered the retail market as of March 2nd I believe. We have the board and we have the chips in ready to test, just need to find time to do them when people stop launching server platforms. However, Ryzen 5000G APUs, they are going to come to retail. Um, you and I are going to be able to at least theoretically buy them. Uh, AMD will produce marketing materi material around them and press will be sampled for to review them. With a global semiconductor shortage, you have to really wonder how many will be available. Part of me is thinking that these big OEM companies, the Dells, the HPs, the Lenovo's, they have contracts in place to sell APU-based systems on Ryzen 5000G, and they just have to get them out as part of the contract deal. That means that AMD has to at least produce some for them to sell. Uh, but the fact that it is going to become a full retail product kind of suggests that AMD is aligning more perhaps with how many how much silicon it needs from TSMC don't know however the new 5000G APUs will have a Ryzen 7 5700G a Ryzen 5 5600G and a Ryzen 3 5300G and they all kind of look a bit like this i'm going to be using my article from anantech to explain it um, please go over to an Antec, give them give them the view because uh, it helps pay my pay, pay my wage. Um, but AMD's APU series, we've had the 2000G, 3000G. They were both retail, both uh, built on global foundries with Vega 11 graphics. Then we had 4000G Renoir, which, like I said, never came to retail market, but you can see the full review on an Antec that came with Vega 8 graphics. Um, AMD was able to optimize the design of Vega uh, for 7 nanometer, uh, optimize the physical design where the uh, the frequency went up from, was it 1400 megahertz all the way up to uh, 2100 megahertz for that generation. So they found it best to go with the Vega 8 design. And now we have Ryzen 5000G Cezanne built on 7 nanometer with Zen 3. And we again have Vega 8 graphics. Um, people are going to say, why is it still got Vega 8 graphics? Why don't we have RDNA or RDNA 2 in APUs yet? APUs are typically low cost, low ASP platform products. They don't contribute much to the gross margin of a company. And while AMD is doing really, really well, then there's no real need to put out the cheaper elements of uh, its product stack. However, with the APU, these are still monolithic. So there is a desire to try and reuse as much of the design every generation as possible. So we still have Vega 8 for now. Uh, at one point, we may see you know the same cores, but then moving on the GPU side. The point is, these are some of the best integrated graphics available on the market today. By giving them an extra, say, 50% performance, you know, just picking numbers out of the air with going with RDNA 2, 
does that really bring anything to the unique selling point of these products? Not really. AMD would rather you went out and bought, you know, the full, uh, full fat GPUs, discrete GPUs, um, if you can find them. However, back to Ryzen 5000G. Here are the new APUs. So, Ryzen 7 5700G, 8 core, 16 threads, up to 4.6 gigahertz single thread, 8 compute units, uh, frequency of 2000, we're actually down 100 megahertz compared to Ryzen 4000G. Still got 24 PCIe lanes. Now, these are PCIe 3, not PCIe 4. AMD has decided that because it uses the same silicon for its mobile chips as its desktop chips. Uh, they're not using PCI4 in mobile because it's too power hungry and GPUs these days still don't really benefit that much from a PCI4 link. Uh, so PCI3 is still great for graphics and besides with these uh, APUs chances are you're going to be using the integrated graphics anyway. So, But we have TDPs of 65 watts uh, using AMD's uh, package power tracking we'll probably see that hit 88 watts uh, maximum and for each G series AMD is launching a, uh, an equivalent GE series this is essentially the same chip but a 35 watt TDP which I think uh, PPT goes to 54 watts I need to check that out uh, but the main difference here you know single thread is still the same same GPU frequency just your base frequency changes which means that when you're at a power limited scenario when you're going all core out you're going to be limited to that package power tracking which again i think is 54 watts and it will just do as much frequency as possible because amd does floating turbo so that's ryzen 7 ryzen 5 600g we've got uh 3.9 gigahertz base 4.4 gigahertz boost seven compute units slightly lower on the gpu frequency 65 watts then you have a ge then this one's interesting ryzen 3 5300g so this is a quad core with eight threads running at four gigahertz base, four point two gigahertz boost, six CUs, uh, GPU frequency at seventeen hundred megahertz, sixty five watts, and then the corresponding GE part. So all these APUs, the thing to note here is the L three cache. So when AMD on the Ryzen five thousand series, each chiplet, each of those eight core chiplets has thirty two megabytes of L three. These, because they're the APUs, AMD seen fit to only give them 16 megabytes of L3 per 8 cores. That means so on the monolithic die there is 16 megabytes of L3 cache. With these Ryzen 3 chips, we'll see below as well, because they only have 4 cores, they've again halved their L3 cache, so these only have 8 megabytes of L3 cache. Now, AMD and Intel have both said recently that having lots of L2, lots of L3 is good for gaming. So when we have integrated graphics and adding in discrete graphics, having lots of L3 will help. So it would be really fun to see, you know, say a 24 compute unit with uh, 32 megabytes of L3 or dual chiplet 64 megabytes of L3 and see what that does to the integrated graphics. But truth be told, there's no demand for that sort of chip right now. In this table, I've done a comparison with the uh, Ryzen 4000 uh, series. And uh, yeah, all in all, you know, some frequencies have gone up, but also you've gone from Zen 2 to Zen 3. So that's uh, another IPC boost on top of that. Yeah, going through here, we talked about the cache, we've talked about the frequency increase on the Vega 8 graphics, uh, going from Vega 11 to Vega 8, still waiting for RDNA 2. Um, and then here's the parts as it looks on AMD's uh, webpage. And then it's it, so exact pricing and retail release dates are not disclosed. So these will be coming to retail individually we don't know when or how much and amd isn't saying so retail systems the first retail system we saw is from hp germany even 25 liter desktop um, what makes it absolutely stupid is that while it's a 57g as we see here it comes with the nvidia geforce rtx 3060 ti so you're not really using the integrated graphics at all um, which makes me wonder, again, back to if these companies have contracts that say they have to sell so many uh, APU-based systems based on Zen 3, and this is just, they have to put it out. Uh, HP Germany has does have a Ryzen th uh, 3 5300G system uh, up on its website without a discrete graphics card, so, you know, there is hope. If we do comparisons with the CPU to APU now, so Ryzen 5 5600X versus Ryzen 5 5600G, both six cores, both 12 threads, the APU has a higher base frequency, but the CPU has a higher turbo frequency. With the APU, you obviously get integrated graphics. PCIe, you've got Gen 4, 
on the CPU, you've got Gen 3 on the APU, double the L3 cache on the uh, on the CPU, and then the same TDP. If we go to the Ryzen uh, 7 variants, then uh, this is you know less interesting, I guess, but we have plus 100 megahertz on the turbo for the CPU, APU has the graphics, PCA4, PCA3 again, L3 cache again, and uh, TDP, you know, 105 watts versus 65 watts. It'd be interesting to see what the all-core turbos are here. Chipset support, uh, we reached out to AMD to ask about chipset support. They said uh, 500 series motherboards, yes, will definitely get support. 400 series, it will depend on the uh, motherboard vendor, whether they issue a BIOS to support it. Um, it requires beta BIOSes, and right now, if you manage to get hold of one of these chips, you still need a beta BIOS to get full performance. On top of this, a bit of extra news, but the Ryzen 9 5900 and the Ryzen 7 5800 new CPUs, non-X, 65 watts, OEM only. They're highlighted here, 12 cores and 8 cores. The 12 core parts obviously have more cash because you've got two chiplets. PCA4, 65 watts, again, OEM. So here is the spec list for all of AMD's Ryzen 5000 parts. We have 12 processors, only four of them you can buy at retail, or four of them have suggested retail pricing. You're lucky to, if you can find the 12 core or the 16 core for sale, uh, the 8 core and the 6 cores, more easy to get in most locations now. But aside from that, all the OEM parts you can't buy yet. Uh, the 5900 and the 5800, AMD didn't do an official announcement here, so it, we don't know if they're ever going to come to retail. AMD has done this in the past, where it's done OEM-only parts that never come to retail. Uh, you end up having to buy them off of uh, shady sellers on AliExpress sometimes if you want to get them and test them like we do. This really speaks to where AMD sits as as a company. I mean, they've done these sort of OEM processors type things in the past, uh, where it's I remember them being some chips that were only for sale to Chinese OEMs, for example, and I've had a really hard time getting those. But AMD's in a situation where every piece of silicon they make, they can put it into the most expensive part that they produce, Epics, GPUs and it will be sold and this is why amd's said you know they're expecting to get record revenue for 2021 and especially q1 2021 is going to be pretty up there i think they said something like 3.6 billion dollars in revenue uh, which is insane for a company like amd i mean i know it's you know pennies if you compare it to intel but for amd this is really good it means that they can invest in future products but then we come back to well if the semiconductor market is going to stay where it is, you're going to have to choose whether you produce new parts that get sold out almost immediately, or you continue to build the older parts just so you have enough volume, depending on the competition, depending on how early TSMC needs to have those masks in order to make your chips for the right desired lead time. AMD's in its quiet period right now, uh, usually after a financial disclosure, they go into anywhere from 4 to 12 weeks of not really saying much, so I'm really surprised this actually came out as a press release. I mean, the press release was literally a few lines. So normally it's a quiet period. Normally they don't take interviews or answer questions. They just knuckle down on the R&D, on the sales, um, on the distribution. And this is what they're up to. We hoping that their quiet period will end at least before sort of Computex early June time, um, because there have been some rumors of some more thread rippery things that might come out, which might be interesting. Uh, no, no, I rephrase that. Will be interesting. Minimum specification here is definitely going to be AMD, please put more stuff to retail. Even if it's, you know, stuff you can we can just buy on AMD's website. Please at least do it. Please. Please. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe. If you didn't, please leave a comment below. Please let me know where I went wrong. Please let me know how to make this channel better and how it would be better for you. This channel is supported by the community. Your views help me. If you have premium, uh, YouTube premium, then that helps everyone. Uh, if you want to do a little more, there is a Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash techtechpotato. Uh, I've literally just purchased new cameras. Um, they're arriving. I'm getting some stuff to improve the video quality for you guys. And so when we go on the road, I've already got some road trips planned. Uh, it's going to look really fun, and I've got some really nice ideas coming up. So thank you to all the supporters. You really help make this channel what it is.